That was Flower by Jenny Beth, known for her uninhibited stage presence. The French singer-songwriter has made a name for herself, leading the critically acclaimed all-female British punk band Savages. And now she's going solo with a powerful debut album, To Love Is To Live, released on June 12th. Now, given the current situation, strict social distancing measures remain in place here at France 24, and that's why we're joining Jenny virtually Jenny, thank you so much for being with us virtually today. Before we talk about your new album, uh, these certainly are unusual times that we're living in. How did the ongoing coronavirus and the lockdown, how did all that affect your musical projects? Hello, first, and thanks for having me. Um, I Well, I played my first show in March, and it was a week before street lockdown. And I had been I had been working on this record for two years and a half. Uh, spent six months on working to put together the live performance with musicians and the and the team. And I was playing my first show in London at the Roundhouse. And when I came out of stage, I said, "I'm ready," you know. And I felt um, at the beginning of a new journey. I had invested a lot, a lot of time, time and passion and money into this project. And and obviously. Um, a week later, I was locked down in my home in Paris, you know. Now, up until recently, uh, people have known you as being the front woman of the British punk rock band Savages. What pushed you to go solo? It was a, a mix of things. Um, I had an epiphany when David Bowie died. I, uh, I was suddenly very conscious of my own mortality. Um, it just reminded me that the work we do outlives us as well. And the message we give uh, will stay for a very long time. So I felt that I wanted to make a record which carried that urgency and that density of living when you remind yourself that you're not here forever. Um, and I think it was it was a necessity for me. I also had been working five or six years in the band, and um, the band was very pure. It's like a punk band with a soul, you know. And um, and I didn't really want to disturb that. I felt we were really good at keeping a, a strong identity um, as a band together. And I felt that if I wanted to do a step. Uh, in another direction, I had to do it on my own. And it was also very nice to start like I was, to feel like I was starting from scratch. I think I, uh, creatively, I work really well when I commit to something before I know if I can do it. <laughs> well, there's, there's certainly a burning intensity in your compositions. You're really pushing boundaries. You're pushing people's comfort zones. Let's take a listen to another song off your album. It's called I'm the Man. Take a listen. So that's the track, I'm the Man. That song is actually on the fifth season of the hit series, Peaky Blinders. It actually features a spoken word intro from the show star, Killian Murphy. It's an explosive track. It's a somewhat violent track. Would you say that it represents the color and the energy of your album? It represents the side of it, because uh, uh, actually it's a very contrasted record, and I always wanted it to be that way. I discovered that my taste is very eclectic when I started to do my own radio show uh, called Start Making Sense, uh, an hour every week of new music exclusively. And I, I was transformed by that. And I wanted to make a record that was complex, that had a multiplicity of voices. Um, and, um, and that showed humanity as a... Um, uh, human beings as layered. One thing I find so interesting on your album is that there's really a, a lot of raw honesty about, as you said, all the layers of humanity. Uh, it's really refreshing to see someone who's so unapologetically comfortable with all these various sides to humanity. You peel apart all sorts of feelings about love, sex, sin, 
femininity, masculinity, Catholic guilt, violence. Was it a struggle to reach this kind of honesty or did it just need to come out? Did it just bubble out? It needed to come out, but it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I definitely feel very exposed in this record, but that's also what I try to follow all the way through. I definitely wanted to not repeat myself, and I tried really hard to follow the path of the unknown. I think I need to be honest, but, um, you know, you're exposing yourself, so it's just the way it is, I suppose. Now, you're exposing yourself on this solo album, uh, which actually comes as you're releasing a book as well. This is your first book in English. It's called Crimes Against Love Memories. It's a book of graphic sex writing uh, accompanied by erotic photos by your partner, Johnny Hostel. Uh, you're also, I guess, exposing a part of yourself on this as well. What What is driving you with this yeah. book project as well? Well, I wrote the book in between recording sessions of To Love Is To Live. Um, I wanted to talk about sexuality and, and fantasies in a different way and in a way that I didn't really see uh, really um, uh, people talk about around me. Um, whenever I try, a new, I start a new project, it's often because it doesn't exist for me, otherwise I wouldn't do it, you know. Um, I think the book talks about um, freedom and in intimacy and finding freedom in intimacy and especially in fantasies because whatever happens in our mind should be should stay free you know and sometimes I think uh, outside um, stimulus or society or religion even come in and put some boundaries in your in your mind and it's interesting I'm always interesting in putting down some walls you know I'm always curious to know what's behind them Breaking Down Walls, that's a, a very interesting thing you're doing on your album and in this book, uh, something that uh, American folk legend Bob Dylan certainly has done throughout his career as well. Now, he is releasing his 39th studio album called Rough and Rowdy Ways. It's his first album of original material in eight years, and it comes 57 years after wow. his debut LP. Rough and Rowdy Ways features 10 songs, including the swaggering, guitar-heavy False Prophet. Let's take a listen. Hello, Mary Lou. My fleet-footed guides from the underworld No stars in the sky shine brighter than you You girls mean business and I do too Now, Bob Dylan has long rejected the title of Prophet, False or Not, uh, and there's one song on your album that's called Heroin, and in it you say, all I want, all I need is to be a heroin. Uh, you mentioned that when you do a project, it's because it doesn't exist before. Do you feel like there's a lack of representation in modern music, and how did you go about creating that? I, I mean, Heroin was a track that um, I was interested in, in talking about um, a heroin, but a heroin that would take the journey of the hero and not the traditional journey of a heroine mm -hmm. in, in works of fiction. Um, I think uh, often, too often, the heroines are end up at, uh, on the status quo. They end up uh, going back uh, where they came from. When you think of Dorothy in Oz or Alice in Wonderland, um, and they go back and nothing has changed. When the the, the young male hero's journey is um, defined by his coming of age, his uh, you know, the student becomes the master. So my heroine, I wanted it to evolve um, in that sort of landscape where, um, you know, she could become uh, a better, a stronger, a master, a stronger person in well, a way. It's certainly one of my favorite tracks on the album and I definitely recommend you're listening to it. Now, let's move on to something a little bit different. This is the uh, American composer and R&B singer-songwriter John Legend. Well, he thinks this summer is going to be the summer of spreading love. His highly anticipated album, Bigger Love, is coming out this June, and he's already released a music video for the soulful title track in which fans from across the globe submitted videos dancing to the tune. Now, his wife, Christy Teigen, and his kids also make an appearance in this video. Take a look. I don't want to think about nothing. The world feels like it's crumbling. Every day another new something. But in the end, in the end, Nobody do us and I just want to think about love and
Finally, controversial rapper Takashi69 has teamed up with American rapper Nicki Minaj on a new track called Trolls. Now, he was recently released from jail after being sentenced on racketeering charges. The collaboration is for a good cause, as a portion of the proceeds from the track will be going towards The Bail Project, a program that provides free bail assistance to low-income individuals. We're going to play you out with a song, well, a little bit of that clip. But before we go, I want to thank our guest, Jenny. Uh, Beth, thank you so much for being with us today. I hope that we'll be able to have you in the studio in real life. Uh, be <laughs> sure to check out her album. It's really amazing. It's uh, To Love Is To Live. I definitely recommend it. Now, for more arts and culture news, head to our website and stay in touch on social media. We'll uh, be right back on France 24. Somebody usher this nigga into a clinic. My flow still sick. I ain't talking the pandemic. I write my own lyrics. A lot of these bitches gimmicks. They study Nikki style. Now all of them want mimic. Talking about snitches when it's snitches and you can't. Never stand alone. You always itching for a stamp. Me, I'm still money. Wrists is light up like a lamp. They gonna have to send me best.